So if you're at a concert, uh, like I was at Rob Thomas in the front row, eat your heart out, Rocky. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you'll want to check out this next company. It's called SwitchCam. And it lets th you aggregate video from all of the cell phones in the concert or in the event and put it all together. Who are you? My name is Brett Welch. I'm the CEO of SwitchCam. Moved over here from Australia when uh, my last company, Good Barry, was acquired by Adobe in 2009. And uh, now I'm working on SwitchCam. Very cool. What is SwitchCam? SwitchCam is a new video site for watching video of events that's recorded, where the video is recorded by the people who are actually there. So we take, we find all the videos from YouTube, Facebook and so forth, then we aggregate them all together and we synchronize them up so that you can actually watch the whole event from start to end and from multiple angles throughout. Very cool. So, I mean, I was at this Rob Thomas concert in the front row, and everybody is shooting these concerts mm -hmm. now with the holding up their iPhone or their Android right. phone. And, um, but people shoot different parts of the concert, right? Sure. I only shot a couple minutes of one song, yep. which wasn't even the complete song. So how do you find all this video, you know, done in the back row, the front row, the left row? The, well, that's the, that's the magic of it. We actually analyze the content of the video itself to see how they relate with other videos. And then we use that information and it all kind of shakes out in the end. It's a lot of statistics and, and sort of analysis in there, but that's the secret sauce. And then tell me what it looks like on the screen. So when, when somebody comes in and watches this Rob Thomas video or any video, what, what sure. happens on their screen because so of see, all these cameras around? Right. So you'll see the uh, primary sort of camera angle, which we've chosen as the best one based on the number of views. On the left, you'll see a set list or a list of tagged uh, moments where you can jump to certain parts of the concert. And then on the bottom, you'll see the other camera angles that are actually synchronized with the main ones. And so you can click on that and immediately switch to the other angles, whether it's in the front or the back or the middle and so forth. Okay. Views are interesting because uh, at first my video might be more more viewed because I'm popular and I have lots of Twitter followers. Yeah. Um, but somebody might actually have a better video than I do, right? Yeah. And so, are you watching what people are actually clicking on underneath, and are, are you switching the main view to that? So the common, it's also fairly common that people who upload quickly get a lot of views because they're the first one that was there. Um, and so that's, that is, so we have to use uh, voting to actually enable people to say this is a better angle than that one. And so we haven't quite rolled it out yet, but it's in the next release where you'll actually be able to vote for this angle versus another one. Um, but you know, we do see people switching camera angles quite often as they watch the videos, pr presumably because they see something that's a more suitable angle. Yep. Yeah. Um, how do you synchronize all this video? Because it, it, first of all, the audio is not all that great on these cell phones, right? So yeah. if I'm in the front row, I'm right next to the speaker, it sounds different than if I'm in the back by the soundboard, right? Well, you know, you don't actually need a pure, clean audio signal to synchronize these things up. Like from a geeky perspective, it's really just about frequency domains. And so you don't you don't really need a perfect uh, a perfect soundtrack, and it, so far it works well. There's also lots of other signals you can use, like rates of change um, as people are moving across the camera, and there's things, especially since we're all focusing on the same thing that, that's going on, you can use that as well. Um, and some very small percentage, about 2% of the videos on YouTube have geolocation, but things like that um, can help as well. Very cool. Are you looking at the metadata? So y it sounds like you are looking at the metadata around. Like we're not actually looking at it yet, but okay. it's something we're, we're looking at it to look at it. You know what I mean? Um, it's something that's useful, but there's not enough for act to actually do what we want to do. Yeah. And, and also, when YouTube transcodes all the videos, it loses a lot of the really rich metadata. Um, and so that's why they, you know, I'm sure they're working on it, but it's just not in the library. So. Where I was going with this, if somebody titles their uh, their uh, video Lady uh -huh. Gaga San Francisco, yep. you're looking at the date, the title, uh, Title. are you looking at that step to try to figure out that oh, it's a absolutely. Lady Gaga? Yeah, so concert. we definitely have to do, we do actually do multiple searches. So, you know, from a, uh, if you've searched YouTube lately, you know that like, it doesn't really surface everything the right way. And if you, you might've written, uh, written MSG instead of Madison Square Garden stuff like that. So we actually run multiple searches in the back end to, to find a super set of videos and then we kind of shake them out using our audio tech. Tell me about building a business because it, it, it's not clear to me what the business model is here other than advertising. And, um. Sure. Well, the business model is advertising. Um, it's a little like Vivo. So if you look at Vivo, they recently announced they had 150 million revenue last year. And that's because brands are looking to reach the fans of musicians. Uh, and musicians more and more are looking for new ways to make money. So it's actually perfect timing for more startups to 
connect brands with the audience that musicians have and then make sure that everyone benefits out of that, yeah. uh, that mix. So that's exactly the, the model we're approaching. And you're know, working with CAA and Live Nation and artists like Pitbull who are al already sort of open to this kind of idea. How do you get the average normal person who doesn't read TechCrunch or watch my blog, mm -hmm. how do you get them to know about you so that they start using the service? A lot of it's social. Um, we, you know, as I said, we're working with artists and, and they are uh, incentivized to, to sort of drive traffic to the site or to their site. And so that's part of it. Um, you, we also see social sharing. So a lot of people are, are liking different songs. You can actually share individual songs from a concert on Twitter and Facebook. And so that also attracts traffic from like-minded kind of fans on their social networks. Yeah. Are you finding some bands don't like uh, concert videos? Because like when I was shooting sure. uh, Ty Cruz in Munich, they, they had a person coming around saying only shoot the first 45 seconds and oh. I'm always worried about putting video up on YouTube because I yeah. think it's going to get taken down and knock and uh, if you have too many videos removed they kick sure. you off the service and stuff like that so I'm worried about that. Are you, f are you finding that videos get taken down We over find time? that more and more artists are actually looking to YouTube as a way to promote their concerts. Uh, it's you know these guys are not just like yourself like you're not a bootlegger you're not trying to make profit off recording your videos, you're just trying to share an experience that moved you. And I think that's, that's, where, the, where, that's where we're going. There's definitely an old guard of artists who, who hate that kind of thing. And, and there's also people who, with, with some validity, say, put your camera down and enjoy being there. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that with SwitchCam, you can take a few videos of the things that really matter to you, and then we'll actually gather the rest so that you don't have to, you can actually be in the moment and still enjoy the videos that other people have taken at the same place. Yeah. So yeah. Very cool. Tell me about being here at 500 Startups and being part of this incubator. What 500 is awesome. Yeah. Um, Why? There's definitely a really strong community here. Like you, there's all the startups here. They're all smart people who are all striving for their own goals. And being in that environment is really motivating. And also, you know, you meet some really interesting, cool people. Um, I think the prep for Demo Day was was amazing. You know, we had. VCs coming in, we had mentors coming in, we had other startups from the, from the batch and previous batches come in to fe give you feedback, tell you what you were missing on, what was not good, what was good, and that really helped hone the pitches. And so by demo day, you felt really confident that you actually had a story that was going to resonate with with the crowd. Um, that was really awesome as well. Um, the other thing that was a highlight was early in the program, they we did a design boot camp, and that was you know uh, Enrique Allen sort of brought together some some experts around design thinking and the Stanford D School. And we really looked at you know who your target customer was and 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 how that how to design with them in mind. And I think that was the pro rapid prototyping and those kinds of things were all valuable lessons that we all talk about. But it's different paying lip service to actually doing it. And and I think we uh, definitely had an opportunity early on in the program yeah. to do that. What are some tips for the next class uh, as they get, come here and? Uh, do you have any tips for being successful in this program? It's really what you make of it. I think you, you need to throw yourself into it. You definitely need to work out of this office so you can get the community benefits. Um, I think you really need to make sure that, you know, look at the list of mentors and see who you want to talk to. And, and early on, try and reach out to those guys and build a relationship because, you know, it's, they, 500 has a lot of mentors and, and you know, they, they are usually busy with doing really cool stuff. So getting on their radar and building a relationship is important. So I think, 500 can be really valuable as long as you put in a lot of effort and, and actually think carefully about what you want to get out of it as you come in. And then yeah. I think you'll get more out of it if you do that. Do you think that uh, there's still value in being here in Silicon Valley versus, because there's, I have a list of European uh, startup incubators that this long. You know, yeah. Do you have to be here in the Valley to start a company? Well, coming from somebody who started a company in Australia and then you know, came over here, I definitely think being here, you have to be here. Um, the the networks that are here, the people who are here, the the, the the serendipity, like just being in a bar and talking about something, it's like, oh, I know a guy who knows this guy who can do that for you. And that sort of stuff just doesn't happen in, uh, well, in, in Australia. It may happen in other startup rich kind of environments. Um, yeah, maybe London or New York. Yeah, or sure. Tel Aviv. I think, you know, when you're a small company, you need all the allies you can get. And in Silicon Valley, a, a lot of people are willing to be an ally of a startup. When you're in uh, you know, cities that don't have a strong startup population, the, the allies are really few and far between. And they don't understand, they don't want to help, they don't care, or, or, or maybe they just, they just don't get it. So I think it, it definitely helps. Very cool. Where do I learn more about what you're doing? Switchcam.com. Nice and easy. Very cool. Okay. Thank you so much for spending a few minutes. Cheers. Me.